I recently discussed 10 extinct species of birds of prey and owls throughout the world that don't seem to get as much attention as other prehistoric species. This list included species such as the giant Cuban owl Ornimegalonyx, along with Isles' harrier from New Zealand, and a whole host of other unique species, including various island giants. However, the amount of extinct species of birds, specifically birds of prey and owls for the purpose of this video, is so extensive that I can make yet another video of 10 unique species that many have not heard of before. So, from a species of eagle native to Madagascar that hunted lemurs in the ancient past, to a species of owl only found on the islands of New Zealand and died out so recently that it was captured in photographs, and an Ice Age species of undescribed owl so gigantic it dwarfed all modern species, here are 10 extinct birds of prey and owls you may have never heard of before, part 2. In the previous video on this subject, one of the species mentioned was Daniel's raptor, an extinct ancestor of modern falcons and caracaras whose remains were found in southern England. This peculiar looking ancestor lived around 55 million years ago in the early Eocene epoch, so not long after the death of the non-avian dinosaurs, which occurred around 66 million years ago. Although Daniel's raptor is known from very fragmentary remains, there is in fact another very closely related species of bird, which is known for more numerous and more complete remains than Daniel's raptor, therefore providing us with more information on this ancient lineage of birds. This very similar looking fossil bird is known as Massilaraptor. Massilaraptor seems to be a slightly younger species of bird than Daniel's raptor, living in the middle Eocene, a period of time between 47.8 and 38 million years ago. Only one species of Massilaraptor is so far known, and the species itself is only known so far from two specimens, both of which are nearly complete. The name Massilaraptor refers to the old town of Messel in Germany, which is where the remains of this extinct bird were found in the first place. More specifically, the remains were found in the Messel Pit Formation, which is one of the richest fossil sites in the world, with over a thousand species of both animals and plants preserved in the formation. Dating from the early Eocene epoch itself, many of the fossils found here are exquisitely preserved, with many specimens having the outlines of their bodies still visible, and some having the remains of their final meal embedded in their stomachs. The Eocene Epoch was a period in Earth's history where many animals, especially relatively small ones, began to greatly expand in terms of ecological diversity since the death of the non-avian dinosaurs. These included many primitive ancestors of modern animals we find more familiar. For example, this is the fossil of an ancient horse, which had four distinct toes on each foot and would have barely stood taller than a spaniel. Other mammalian species, such as ancestral anteaters, and even early primates, likely resembling modern bush babies and lemurs, began to take to the trees and adopt an arboreal lifestyle. Smaller insect-eating mammals were also abundant on the ground, along with early rodent-like species, resembling modern-day rats and mice, with some species even resembling modern-day squirrels. With so many of these small mammals running around, it seems of little surprise then that in response, various species of bird began to adapt in order to take advantage of this new food opportunity. And it's very possible that Massilaraptor was among these birds. The remains of Massilaraptor may still not be quite as well preserved as some of the previous animals I've discussed from these pits, but it certainly can tell us a lot about how this bird may have looked and behaved in life. Along with Daniel's raptor, Massilaraptor is believed to be a long-legged relative of modern-day falcon species, with both anatomical differences and similarities to these modern raptors. To start with, it had quite a long and narrow beak, with a shallow curve just towards the tip of the upper mandible. This is quite different from the beak shape seen in modern larger falcon species, which typically have a shorter, stouter beak with a more pronounced hook, 
and also the presence of the tomial tooth on the upper mandible, which gives them a more powerful and effective bite when subduing prey. Mycelloraptor also had unusually long legs for its size, with the tibiotarsus being the longest bone in its leg, and it also had relatively short toes on its feet. This primitive raptor also had comparatively smaller and weaker talons on its feet than most modern larger falcons. For some species, such as the peregrine for example pictured here, have proportionally very long powerful toes and larger sharper talons designed to withstand tremendous impact in dispatching prey. The more gracile build combined with the long legs of Mycelloraptor indicates it may have hunted closer to the ground, and in terms of its physical appearance, it seems to have more in common with modern Caracaras, who themselves are part of the falconiform family tree. Mycelloraptor may have potentially hunted small mammals on the ground, much like these birds in this regard, chasing small prey across short distances on the wing, and maybe even occasionally on foot given the chance. Interestingly, it seems that Mycelloraptor was not the only species of smaller predatory bird around at this time in the Mesel Formation, for there are also fossils, very well preserved that is, of a very early species of owl, Paleoglox. This small early species of owl may have also hunted the very small rodents and reptiles roaming on the ground at the time, in the forested habitats of the early Eocene, along with larger insects. These two different species found in the same location are some of the earliest known species of fossilised birds of prey and owls known in the world, and they provide an interesting comparison between themselves and their distant descendants alive today. Moving on now from the Eocene to the Oligocene epoch for the next species. This portrait depicts a very small ancient bird of prey from this time period, known as Aviraptor. Some fairly well preserved remains of Aviraptor have been found in Poland, and the species itself was named and described in 2020. These remains do indeed date to the Oligocene Epoch, precisely around 31 to 30 million years ago. The fossils show that this was a small bird with slender proportions and long legs, which is referenced by its scientific name, Aviraptor longicus, which roughly translates to long-legged bird thief. Aviraptor was especially small for a bird of prey, with a body size comparable to that of some of the smallest known sparrowhawk species alive today. It likely closely resembled these small exhibitors in both size and appearance in life, with long slender legs and long narrow toes, suggesting it was an adept bird hunter, though it seemed to also share some physical characteristics with modern day harrier hawks. However, despite these similarities with modern day exhibitors, especially smaller species, it seems that Aviraptor was not directly related to these birds, as it seems to be a much more ancient kind of raptor, living 30 to 31 million years ago, whereas true exhibitrines are believed to have appeared 16 to 18 million years ago. There also appears to be some anatomical differences between Aviraptor and modern day exhibitors, including the proportions of the second toe on the foot, and also the shape of the humerus, the upper arm or wing bone. As I briefly touched on earlier, Aviraptor was found to have proportionally long legs and slender toes for its size, which indicates a small raptor well designed for hunting other birds, and it just so happens that Aviraptor was a contemporary to some of the earliest known passerines or perching birds, and even some early hummingbird species, indicating that this might be, possibly, the earliest known species of bird hunting raptor in the fossil record that we know of. Many are familiar with the crested caracara, a highly intelligent and resourceful raptor found in the southern United States and also into Central and South America. Mexico's Guadalupe Island once had a caracara species of its own, which was extremely similar to modern crested caracaras, but is sadly no more. The Guadalupe caracara was very similar in appearance to the living crested caracara once being considered to be a subspecies of the living crested caracara, 
before being reinstated as its own species in 2000. Much like its modern relatives, it was almost certainly a highly intelligent bird, which was able to both hunt for live prey using its taloned feet, and also scavenge carcasses given the opportunity. In 1876, this species of caracara was common throughout the island, but shortly afterwards it began to suffer a serious decline. Unfairly described as vicious and evil birds by early observers, goat farmers on the island of Guadalupe did not exactly have the nicest feelings towards the caracara itself, and it was demanded that these birds would be killed on sight as they pose a significant threat to their goat herds, even though claims of caracaras predating on live goats were greatly exaggerated, with individuals being seen next to dead goats almost certainly being of a scavenging rather than predatory nature. Tragically, it seems that the Guadalupe caracara is one of the few species that were intentionally rendered extinct by humans, for great numbers of them were shot and poisoned during this time for these reasons. It should also be mentioned that feral populations of goats escaping from the farms on the island also contributed to the extinction of various endemic species due to habitat destruction caused by overgrazing, which may have also led to the accelerated decline of the caracara due to likely food reduction and habitat loss. The last possible sighting of this bird was in 1903, with the species assumed to be completely gone by 1906. Today, only 35 physical specimens of this caracara remain, including skins, skeletons and eggs, all held in museums. Gigantohyrax is a species of extinct raptor I've discussed multiple times in previous videos. It was a gigantic eagle-like raptor with a 3 meter wingspan and a body size almost as great as the mighty Haast's eagle from New Zealand. This huge predator dominated the island of Cuba for millennia, but it was not the only giant eagle-like bird of prey that roamed the islands of the Caribbean in the distant past. This is Titanohyrax, another species of large bird of prey, whose remains have been found across multiple islands in the Bahamas, dating to the Pleistocene epoch. Recent studies on this extinct raptor based on its taxonomy have suggested that the Titanohyrax was closely related to the family of raptors belonging to the genus known as Geranoatus, which includes species such as this Chilean blue eagle. Titanohyrax was therefore a particularly large raptor for its kind, with the largest individuals weighing up to nearly 7.5 kilograms, roughly comparable to the mass of some of the larger eagle species alive today. This bird was also very hefty and powerful in its build, with fossils indicating it had more robustly built legs and talons than its modern relatives. Until as recently as about 17,000 years ago, Titanohyrax was therefore likely an apex predator across many of these Bahaman islands, with its prey including a large species of terrestrial rodent known as a husha. It is believed that declines in the population of this rodent prey, along with changes in habitat and possibly even some human influence, is what led to the ultimate decline and extinction of this great bird. Another kind of large bird of prey endemic to the Caribbean during this time was Buteogallus borassi, or giant Buteonine hawk. This particular species was endemic to the island of Cuba and lived until about as recently as the early Holocene, around 10,000 years ago or so. Known from various remains, this raptor is actually the most commonly found fossil exhibitrid in the quaternary deposits of Cuba itself, an area which is believed to have been a savanna-like environment back during this time. The closest living relative of Buteogallus borassi is believed to be this, the great black hawk, also being part of the larger genus known as Buteogallus itself. The extinct Buteogallus borassi, however, was at least a third larger than the largest great black hawk alive today, though for its size it had unusually gracile and slender features. 
It had legs that were proportionally as long or even longer than its modern relatives, and it also retained the large powerful feet and talons used for capturing and killing its prey. Rather incredibly, this bird would have shared its habitat throughout its ancient history with other even larger raptors that I have previously discussed in these videos, including Woodward's eagle, Gigantohyrax, and the aforementioned Titanohyrax. However, considering the abundance of Brutiogallus barassi fossils in Cuban deposits, it seems that this was by far the most successful bird around, and its comparatively smaller size did not prevent this bird from being more adaptable and numerous than the other extinct giants it shared its habitat with. One can imagine a scenario such as this, where the smaller Brutiogallus barassi harasses and mobs the much larger Gigantohyrax in an aerial duel for straying too close to its nest or territory, just like how modern hawks and buzzards do so towards true eagles alive today. The remains of Brutiogallus barassi indicate that it was a highly aerial predator, and would have almost certainly predated mostly on the small to medium sized mammals present at the time, including rodents and small insectivores such as this Selenodon, which just so happened to be one of the few venomous mammals on earth. This extinct raptor therefore was a true survivor, living in an island diverse with other much larger predatory birds, and yet still managing to be the most abundant by far. Around 40,000 years ago, in the late Pleistocene Epoch, which is during the Ice Age, the Andean regions of South America were once home to an especially large and fearsome owl. The original remains found of this bird were found between 2009 and 2012 in the ravines of the Queprada Chalan, which is in the Ecuadorian Andes. It was given the scientific name Asio Ecuadoriensis. As part of the Asio or Eared Owl family, this makes this extinct bird closely related to modern species such as the long-eared owl pictured here. However, next to the comparatively dainty long-eared owl, this extinct owl was quite the giant. Larger individuals may have stood nearly two and a half feet tall and had a wingspan of at least over five foot across, with a build and overall size comparable to that of a great horned owl from North America. Much like the living great horned owl, this giant Ecuadorian owl was itself an aggressive and powerful hunter with its fossilised remains indicating it had longer and much more powerful legs and feet than modern Asio owl species. One particular site where this owl's bones have been found provides an even greater insight into the hunting prowess of this powerful bird. The site also contained the bones of various small mammals including shrews and rodents, as well as rabbits, but there were also numerous bones of other owl species found, including an American barn owl, burrowing owl, and pygmy owl, suggesting that all of these animals, including the other owls, were part of this owl's menu. Larger species of modern owls, particularly eagle owls and great horned owls themselves, are quite aggressive, and are themselves known to occasionally predate smaller raptors, including other owl species, but to find evidence of an extinct owl hunting other species of owls in a specific location is quite extraordinary and shows that in terms of diet, this bird was not a fussy eater. In the present day, the African crowned eagle is one of the largest and arguably most powerfully built of all Africa's eagles. With a wingspan that can reach over six foot across, this formidable predator resides in forested and scrubland habitats on the continent, and is adapted for taking on particularly large prey items, some of which can reach over four times its own body weight. With its incredibly large and powerful legs and feet, along with huge talons, capable of crushing the skull of its victims, this fierce and powerful species of forest eagle has been known to take on a wide range of larger animals, including fully grown bushbuck antelope and larger species of monkeys such as velvet monkeys. While today this bird can only be found in the wilds of Africa, 
There was a time when an extinct variant of this eagle thrived on the island of Madagascar, where it lived quite the similar lifestyle, but with very different contemporaries in its ecosystem. The Malagasy crowned eagle was an extinct species native to the island of Madagascar until around 1500 AD. It was comparable in appearance and size to the modern African crowned eagle, although some individuals may have been somewhat larger, with the largest ones being up to 7 kilos in weight. Living in the Malagasy forests on the island, this raptor was well adapted for life in the forest like its modern cousin, with relatively short broad wings and a long tail for a highly manoeuvrable flight style considering the bird's great size. Modern African crowned eagles, along with the somewhat similar looking harpy eagle, both feed heavily on primates, specifically monkeys, but in Madagascar, monkeys were not present and instead were home to another species of familiar primate, the lemurs. It seems fairly certain that the Malagasy crowned eagle would have hunted lemurs as a large part of its diet, but back in prehistory, lemurs were even more diverse and strange than their modern counterparts. For example, there was a species that approached the size of and lived a similar lifestyle to the modern day gorilla. It seems likely, however, that this great eagle would have still been a major threat to many of the species of diurnal lemurs, including some of the larger species we're familiar with today, as well as the juveniles of other larger extinct species. This extinct species of forest eagle would have likely hunted its prey in a very similar manner to its modern relative, likely ambushing its prey in the treetops using a fast and agile approach in the air, while using its enormous feet and talons to snatch and kill its prey incredibly quickly. With such size and power, this great raptor was almost certainly one of the apex predators on the island of Madagascar at the time, alongside the likes of the giant fossa and the voye crocodile, all of which becoming the dominant carnivores on this isolated and strange ecosystem. One of the most recently extinct species on this list, alongside the Guadalupe Caracara, the Laughing Owl was a species endemic only to the islands of New Zealand. This medium-sized species of owl had a brownish coloration, with yellowish markings and a pale greyish face, hence its other old-fashioned name, the white-faced owl. This species earned its name from the bizarre calls it used to make, often at night, with one source describing the calls as sounding like a loud cry made up of a series of dismal shrieks frequently repeated. The Laughing Owl was found across pretty much all of New Zealand, with there being a North Island subspecies and a South Island subspecies. Recent genetic analysis of preserved specimens indicates that the Laughing Owl was most likely close relatives of modern-day Boobook Owls. Laughing owls seem to prefer rocky, low rainfall areas and forest districts, particularly when it came to breeding, which began in September or October. They often nested on rocky ledges or even on bare ground, where they would lay two white eggs as seen here by this preserved museum specimen. Due to their recent extinction, these birds are known from numerous preserved body and egg specimens in museum collections, and there are even photographs taken of these birds while they were still alive, particularly this one, which is of a South Island subspecies of Laughing Owl taken sometime between 1889 and 1910. Laughing Owls were known to have quite a varied diet, and although they could fly well, they seemed to prefer to hunt on the ground and on foot compared to them on the wing. They were known to feed on a wide range of ground-dwelling insects, such as wetter and beetles, as well as various small reptiles such as geckos and tuatara, as well as frogs, they also hunted a wide range of smaller birds. When the Maoris arrived on the islands of New Zealand around 1100 AD, they brought with them Polynesian rats, which the owls quickly began to acquire a taste to. Until the arrival of these rodents, these owls would have only known a few species of bats as the only native species of mammals present in New Zealand. For centuries after this point, the laughing owl remained a relatively common species throughout both the north and southern islands of New Zealand, and by around the early 19th century, the species was still fairly abundant. 
That all changed when these new settlers began to bring along with them various invasive species that the owl was unprepared for. Invasive brown rats were more formidable and carnivorous than the Polynesian rats and would have been a more challenging prey item for even an adult laughing owl to tackle. These rodents also heavily predated on owl eggs and youngsters, significantly denting their breeding populations. This was made even worse by other introduced species such as cats, ferrets and stoats, which would not only predate on the eggs and chicks, but even adult owls themselves given the chance. This intense competition and especially predation by these invasive species on the laughing owl, combined with a handful of individual specimens being killed for specimen collection by humans, is ultimately what led to these birds dying out. The last confirmed sighting of this bird in the wild was in 1914, after which it was almost certainly extinct. Undoubtedly one of, if not the best known of all the world's eagle species, the golden eagle is found across much of the northern hemisphere and is best known for its great size and regal beauty. With a wingspan that can reach over 7 foot across or more, this bird is beautifully adapted for soaring high over open and rugged terrain where it is both a formidable predator and scavenger. With massive talons that can rival the size of a lion's claws, and feet that can squeeze with over 10 times the strength of a human hand, the golden eagle has one of, if not the most varied diets amongst all eagle species alive today, hunting everything from small insects to prey as big as deer. Found right across Europe, North America and Asia, this eagle is actually known by numerous subspecies or races if you will, and is one of the most successful species of eagles alive in the world today. There is evidence, however, that these birds were also very successful back in the distant past, specifically the Pleistocene Epoch, where there were several other subspecies of golden eagle that were just as impressive, if not more so, than their modern counterparts. Remains assigned to a subspecies of golden eagle have been found in Lyco Cave in Crete and date from the middle Pleistocene Epoch. As well as remains being found here in Greece, there are also remains of ancient golden eagles being found in France, including some specimens that indicate that these paleo subspecies could grow especially large indeed. Perhaps even more interestingly, remains of a species of golden eagle have also been found in the La Brea Tar Pits in California, one of the richest sites of prehistoric animal remains in the world. Over the millennia, an almost immeasurable amount of animals and plants, including some of the world's most iconic species, such as mammoths and saber-toothed cats, became trapped in naturally occurring tar here, where they ultimately perished and remained preserved for thousands of years. Some of these prehistoric golden eagles, including the ones found in France and also the ones found in California, appear to have been somewhat larger than some modern golden eagles. The Californian subspecies also seems to have slightly different proportions to modern golden eagles, with a comparatively heavier skull, larger wings and shorter stockier legs than modern golden eagles. As a whole, the golden eagle is an apex predator within its respected ecosystem, and not only hunts a wide range of prey, but is also known to aggressively interact with other carnivores within its habitat, including mammalian carnivores and other large birds of prey such as other eagles and vultures, most often when competing for food in harsh conditions, for example. This is especially interesting considering the golden eagles found in the La Brea tar pits, for they lived in an ecosystem absolutely filled with a variety of different carnivorous predators and scavengers, both avian and mammalian. These included the iconic saber-toothed cats, dire wolves as well as modern grey wolves, and various carnivorous birds we have discussed in previous videos, including the giant pterotorns and the gigantic Woodward's eagle. All of which may have been a potential source of competition for food and resources for this giant variant of prehistoric golden eagle. One of the subjects of discussion in the previous video on this channel was about gigantic species of prehistoric owls, including Ornimegalonyx, 
a huge species from the island of Cuba, and Titopollens, a giant barn owl relative hailing from the Bahamas. However, it has recently come to my attention that there was yet another species of gigantic owl that lived in the distant past, for which I have not yet mentioned until now. An obscure species of prehistoric owl so gigantic that not only did it completely dwarf any modern species, but also challenged the size of extinct ones previously mentioned. Back in the 1970s, a series of bones were described from a formation in the southwestern United States, dating from the Pleistocene Epoch. Amongst a range of other animals, some were certainly those belonging to a species of owl, though certainly not one from the modern era, because even by owl standards, they were enormous. The largest species of owls alive today, specifically the Eurasian eagle owl and the Blackiston's fish owl, can have a wingspan of at least over six foot across, but even these birds seem small compared to this extinct owl, which may have been at least an extra half the size or more. This species, therefore, would certainly be a contender for one of the largest owls that ever lived, with a body size potentially rivaling that of Ornimegalonyx, the giant Cuban owl, but with a much larger wingspan, and potentially even outclassing Titopollens, the giant barn owl, in overall size. Unfortunately, the remains of this bird appear to be very fragmentary, and there is little information about it considering it appears to be an undescribed species as of now, but there are some inferences that can be made. It is believed that this extinct bird was part of the owl family known as Strix, which includes modern large species such as the great grey owl, whom of which it may have resembled in life. Larger species of modern owls, including the great grey, along with great horned owls, and the various species of larger eagle owls are all highly effective predators that are known to feed on a very wide range of prey. Some, like the Eurasian eagle owl for example, are capable of taking prey as big as small deer and foxes, using especially large and sharp talons, and possibly the strongest grip in the raptorial bird world aside from larger eagles, estimated to squeeze at over 400 pounds per square inch or so. Bearing this in mind, one shudders to imagine the potential power and hunting ability of this gigantic extinct owl, which itself possessed enormous talons, and a gripping power in its raptorial feet that would definitely outclass any modern species. Based on the behaviour of its modern relatives, this gigantic owl was most likely a nocturnal hunter that swooped down on unsuspecting prey, even particularly large animals, including a species of long-nosed peccary that could be as large as a grown man. These animals had especially large and sharp canine teeth and an attitude to match considering their modern counterparts, but even they may not have been safe from this gigantic aerial hunter, which would have most likely shared another trait of modern owls, that is a silent flight, to take them by surprise. This immense owl would have filled a similar predatory niche in a nocturnal setting to its diurnal bird of prey contemporaries, including one in particular, the aforementioned Woodward's eagle, which would have been likely similar in size and may have at one point lived in the same place at the same time. So it seems that prehistoric North America, during the Ice Age at least, was roamed both day and night by gigantic prehistoric eagles and giant owls, as if all the other awe-inspiring creatures around at this time weren't enough. <laughs>